Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So today I'm going to do a uh, what I would consider a very unpopular video. And we're going to talk about the recession because there's been a little bit of fears that are going around. So I wanted to see how the recession is, how it may be coming into play. And of course, what we're looking at moving forward and if we are actually going to get into a recession. First of all, nobody really knows. But I will say this. It is quite interesting that across the board on X and different sentiment factors, you can see that as far as like a fear and greed index, people are pretty fearful. And I think there's a lot of different reasons for that. Right now we're at 27. I think at 25 we become to get into that extreme fear level. But there's been bearish sentiment going around. First of all, from Bitcoin news, Google searches for the term Bitcoin hit their lowest level since the beginning of the year. So that's one thing. Also, the traditional markets have already taken a dive as well. And over the last uh, 24 hours, we've seen quite a bit of volatility. Today, 0.16. But if we take a look over at uh, the five days, not looking too good for our friends in the traditional markets. Of course, they also have the same fears that we do. Maybe there's a recession around the corner. And of course, with Bitcoin, actually not too bad today. I mean, if you just didn't do anything, you're doing pretty damn good. I mean, we were at 58,000 yesterday and we're at 58,000 today. But in between... It's where things get shaken out. And you can see that quite a precipitous drop down to 55,000, almost 54. And who knows? Let's actually refresh this and see where we're at. Eh, still 58,000. So really, it comes down to what's happening. And there's also other bad news in the, in the crypto sphere. This is from uh, Nick over there at Coin Bureau. And it uh, looks like CFTC is getting into the game. Not only do we have to worry about the SEC and Gary Gensler and the crew, now we have to worry about the CFTC stepping in and charging Uniswap with illegal derivatives trading, which just broke about a couple of hours ago. So quite interesting. That's what the CFTC does now. It looks like I thought they were on our side, but I guess not. So the question is, what's going on? Well, sentiment is bearish. And there's also some things that really, if you think about it, may have some legs. This is Brett. And I ran across his uh, tweet today. I linked his uh, profile in the description. You can check him out over on X. Bitcoin since 2013, data nerd, historical trend charters. And I appreciate this because it's data. I don't believe in this stuff. I don't believe in the data until I verify it. But it didn't make sense. So Brett says, we're 15 days away from the first Fed rate cut of the cycle. And I believe he's correct. And we're gonna take a look at the FOMC in a little bit and uh, how things have actually radically changed in the last 36 hours. But he says, using that same time frame, I overlaid like fractals, the following past rate cut cycles, 81, 90, 2000, 2007, which are the most recent ones. And these four cutting cycles match the same data that we're seeing currently, unemployment rate curving up. And if you have a fractal and take a look at it, you're down 50%. Now in the short term, you actually go up, right? Fed cuts rates, quantitative easing, money printer go burr, and then everybody's like, wait a second, the reason why they cut was because there's something wrong with the economy. Boom, everything goes down 50%. And then he also says, hey, don't forget, if we're taking a look at the Bitcoin two-week RSI, each time the RSI has reached this level and fallen below the 70 RSI line, it's been followed by a 75 to 93% correction. Wowzers, that's quite a bit. But first, there's two things. First of all, I have to verify this. I, I, don't, I don't believe it from, you know, just, just from the get-go. But this looks familiar to me. I think it should look familiar to you. We actually talked about this as far as like cycles. This is looking at the 2017 cycle. And you can see that from 2017, or excuse me, this would be the 2021 cycle. From 2021 down to 2022, you're down 76%. That was the top around November 2021 to the bottom of November 2022, 76%. 85% was the top of 2017 until a year, a year later. And then we have 2013. So yes, it's true. 87, 85, and 76. And right now we're sitting at a 34% drop off from this two-week RSI. Again, got to verify. And we did a video about a week ago or so, and we talked about Fed rate cuts. And we had to ask the question, well, are these Fed rate cuts because of there's three reasons? Is it normalization, a panic, or a recession? And you can see that the normalization from the all the across the board from the rate cuts going from 1984 to 2020, you had one, two, three, four normalization, meaning that the Fed did its job miraculously and maybe inflation cooled and unemployment didn't go so high. 
And you can see that one month, three months, and six months, it's actually pretty good in 12 months. But when you have something like a crash, a crash of 87, panic of 90, well, excuse me, a crash of uh, panic uh, or of COVID, you can see that it actually goes down a lot in the beginning. And then, of course, if we just take a look at just regular recessions, goes down 8%. There's a recession here. Recession goes up a little bit, and then it drops 18 and 5%. So the question I have is, well, is this a normalization? Or is this have to do with a recession and cooling economic factors? This is from Ben. I think we all know him. And this is a report that just came out uh, this morning. The jolts, the job openings, recessions, unemployment levels play a big part. So the job openings right now, it was estimated to be 8.1 million. Actual is 7.6, and previously it was 8.18 million. So there are fewer jobs. And also, the unemployment level has been going up. Now, this, of course, is the pandemic, coronavirus, if you believe in that or not, whatever. If we scroll in here or zoom in, we can say that, that what has the recession been doing? Or excuse me, what has the unemployment rate been doing? It's been ticking up higher, especially as they revise the numbers and we see where we're at. And if you take a look at these little gray areas right here, those are recessions. What do you notice before every recession? Let's take 2007. Unemployment goes down, then there's an uptick, and then woo, goes pretty high. That was the Great Recession. Let's come over here. The same thing that Brett was talking about. 2000, 2001, unemployment rate goes down, 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 and then we have a, an uptick, not too much, and then woo, it goes up again. Do the same thing over here in 1990. Comes down, flattens out, and then wham, it goes up again. And we can see this going across the board, flattens, goes up, unemployment, so on and so forth. So we can see that, yes, unemployment goes up. Sometimes it's pretty high right before a recession. Sometimes there's a little bit of, of an uptick. But where are we at? Again, take a look at the unemployment level. That's quite a bit. So what I did was I overlaid some data points. And this is the great thing about Ben's website. This is a thing called a workbench. And you can overlay any kind of factors that you want, any kind of data, so you can verify the data. And I've got a couple of them, so let's just go through this real quick. So if we take a look at, this is, again, the unemployment rate like we just took a look at. What I want to see is, okay, well, here's the unemployment rate, just like we saw. Here's the recession levels. What about this Fed cutting rates? Well, we take a look at this. Let's turn this on. And I have to apologize right now because I had to make it as white as I could. <laughs> Usually this is all blacked out. But I want you to be able to see this, so I apologize if you have sensitive eyeballs. But if we take a look at this, interest rates, let's turn this Over here, it's a little chaotic, but I want you to zoom in here. Now, let's just try right here. Actually, let's try right here. What do you notice about this? There's an inversion factor. So here in red is the unemployment rate, and then we have the Fed cutting rates. And it seems like they do the exact opposite, do they not? It's like a perfect inversion almost. So as the unemployment rate goes down, economy is pretty healthy. That means the Fed can raise rates. And that's great. And then we hit a recession, and then they do the exact opposite. So when greed is the interest rates, and they start cutting like crazy. It's like, whoops, we made a mistake. Or something other, uh, other factors happen. This was in 2000, 2001. And then again, unemployment rate <clears throat> goes up a little bit. They start to cut rates, and it's just a straight inversion. So over here in 2005, going to 2007, what do you see? The unemployment rate is down low. The Fed rates are high. Then we get into a recession, they cut like crazy. And then it goes up again because we go into a recession. So what happens to unemployment rate in red? It goes up. And then they figured it out, they go, okay, well, let's just flatten it out. Let's just not raise rates. And they did, or they didn't. Unemployment rate goes down. And then at this point, they're like, hey, these things are overheated. We need to start raising rates. And they raise rates. Then we get a pandemic and whatever. And here we go. And you can just see it's the same thing going over again. Now, what do you notice right here? It's the same thing, isn't it? It's the exact inversion. We have unemployment coming up. 
we have rates that are about to be cut. Why? Because there's, problem there's problems in the economy. So some will say, well, this is a normalization. Didn't Jerome Powell talk about this? Didn't he say that CPI is cooling? Great. But he didn't really talk too much about unemployment, right? He did, he did say, if we see things change in the unemployment levels, then we'll make other actions. Take that as you will. But it's like the same thing is going on again. And maybe this is the case for a recession. So is that why I brought you here? To beat you down and tell you that the recession is coming and everything's going to be awful? Of course not. But I have to be a little balanced, right? Here's some interesting things. Let's talk about the good stuff. First of all, I know we just are going through a bearish sentiment in the markets, but I just was, I was doing a show, uh, Twitter Spaces, with B and Crypto, and uh, we were talking, I just thought, I found this kind of interesting, and this, is, this could just be me just digging too much in the charts and not doing enough, but if we take a look at the four-year cycles going back to 2020, check this out. Did you know on September 1st, 2020, again, four years ago, this was the halving year, right? 2020, didn't we just have a halving not too long ago in April of 2024? September 1st, 2020, we just, it's September 4th today, right? All right. September 1st, the same thing happened. You had, the price was 11,895, and then it just dropped off the face of the earth on September 3rd in two days and 48 hours, you lost about 12%. I mean, roughly, correct me in the comment section, almost 12,000 to 10,000. That's a lot. And what did we just see recently? We just were seeing these monstrous dips. But I will want to remind you that what happened here, and again, there's, it's a little bit different because we, you know, rates and uh, unemployment, as we take a look at, is a little bit different now. But it was pretty much sideways until October and October, until we get to like November. We start to go up. What happens in November every four years? That's right, presidential election. I'm sticking to this theory. The theory is the markets don't like ambiguity. They just want to know who's going to be the president. Okay, we get this one, we do this. We get this other one, we do this. And now we know where we're going, then off we go. But let's take a look at this. November 1st, 2020, you have the price of 13720 I want to say the election was a super Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month, right? Thirteen five. And just look what happened. Brr. Well, not that far. I mean, to the end, you went on December 31st, you were at 29,000 from 10,000. You did a 3X in three months. That's not bad. Now, again, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying it was just interesting how we kind of see the peaks and valleys come through. So is that the best we can do? Nah, there's some other good stuff. First of all, like we talked about with the uh, Fed rates, the FOMC looks like we may be dropping not just 25 basis points, but 50 basis points. Current target rate is 525 to 550. And because of what Jerome Powell said, we're going to look at all the data. Now that the unemployment rate is going up and also the jolts just came out lower than expected, meaning there are less job openings, this could open the door for a 50 basis point cut. And what does that mean? Printer go burr. This is the M2 money supply. And if you overlay that with pretty much anything, things go up, not because there's a massive appreciation, just because we got a bunch of money in the market. Now, what did we do recently? Of course, we topped out around 2022. Isn't that funny? April 2022. Didn't we start to really taper down and we, we hit a low point in December, or excuse me, November? Then it went down even more miraculously. We didn't actually take, take it too hard. And then we've been sideways and just recently we've been increasing a little bit of the money supply. But now that we have 50 basis point cut, we could see a big amount. But Rob, didn't you say that once we get this money printer going on from the, uh, the, the cutting of rates, it is only great short term? That's true. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, I'm not for sure we're actually headed for a recession. I'm just giving you the data that you can verify. Ben's got a pretty interesting piece on his uh, website macro recession risk indicators. It takes a look at a bunch of them. And if we just expand this, the only one that is really topped out are these interest rates. But if we take a look at prediction on business, which is indices, inventories, real manufacturing, take a look at national income and product as far as GDP, imports of goods and services, federal government current tax receipts, I guess, unemployment rate, job openings, quits level. It's actually pretty reasonable. 
So if we take a look at all those different indicators, as far as like, if we're going all the way to one, we're definitely having a recession or we're not so much, it's split. And mostly it's split towards, we're not going to have a recession, but what if it does? So this is why I brought you here. And as a reminder, if we have a recession, don't freak out. It's gonna be all right. It's a natural indication. Or it's a natural phenomenon that happens every so often. And this is a piece that we did, gosh, I wanna say six months ago. And as a reminder, recessions usually last, they average 10 months. And that's going back all the way to the 19, 49, 1936, all the way to the present or the current recession that we had during the pandemic in 2020. It averages 10 months, but does that mean that we're gonna feel that pain 10 months in the market? No, it doesn't. If you go all the way back to the 90s, from the market top to the recession, to the market bottom, it was three and a half months. Then it took another five months for the economy to recover. Remember, the economy is not the market, totally different. And then we go forward from January 2001 to 02, it took six months to go to hit the bottom. And then the economy covered after two months out of a recession. And this one might be a little bit painful, but stick with me. The last one, actually, I wouldn't say the last one, but the big one, the Great Recession, that actually took 15 months to hit our bottom. And that was a big, nasty recession. So if we average everything out, that's eh, about 10 months or so. But remember, the market recovers first and then the economy. So what does that tell you? Well, if we go forward and take, a, and of course the pandemic was like a month and a month, who cares about that? But if we go forward and we are in a recession, I hate to say this, but and I know people say it a lot, but it's all how you take a look at it. Is this an opportunity or is this a hindrance? For me, if I take a look at just the risk factors or the time and risk bands, did you know that right now the risk band is at 0 0.479? If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link in the description where I talk about dynamic DCA. And just like we took a look at, not this one, with Brett, and he talked about that you could see a 35% reduction for the price of Bitcoin. Let's take 30% off of 60,000. What is that? 40,000, somewhere around there. Could you handle being in the 40,000s of Bitcoin for the price of Bitcoin, which would put you in the risk band of about 0 0.35 compared to 0 0.47? Could you handle that? Would you see like, okay, now we're gonna go to zero or 18,000, I guess. Or would you look at that as like, okay, 40,000, I can deal with that. And if that does come true, then you have options and it doesn't overwhelm you when it happens because I want you to know that these are the things that you have to think about before it actually happens. Always have a plan and go in two directions when you have options and that's it. And then lastly, just to follow up on uh, Nick's story, because you know, CFTC charges Uniswap. How awful is that? Because I got to give you both, both sides. Here's for the official CFTC website. And this is what happened. The order, finds that Uniswap Labs illegally offered to leverage or marginal retail commodity transactions digital assets via decentralized digital asset trading protocol. The order, which is settled today, requires Uniswap Labs to pay a $175,000 civil monetary penalty and to cease and desist from violating the, C the Commodity Exchange Act as charged, where essentially don't do derivatives trading. So you're telling me that Uniswap probably made billions of dollars and they got to pay $175,000. That my friends is the cost of doing business. And that's it for today. So look, I know it was a little bit long. I want to go over everything as much as I could. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up because there's subscribing when we talk about it's time sensitive.